Hello and welcome to a bonus edition of Cracking the Cryptic where I'm just going to take a look at the GCHQ Christmas Puzzle uh, which was published uh, on their Twitter account a couple of days ago. I heard about this on British Radio and I always quite like the GCHQ challenges. In fact I've got one of their books and it's it's wonderful. Um, the, the sort of level of the puzzle content is always extremely good um, and these are always fun so what have we got to do in order to find out their their seasonal message this time we've got to complete these nine sequences um, plot the single letter answers in the golden nodes on our on our bauble here and follow the flow of the arrows so you can see that if you look carefully there are arrows on this bauble and that's going to follow them from somewhere frosty to unlock a message. Hmm. I'm not sure what that bit means, but we shall find out. Now, I did look at this yesterday, so I do know the answers to these. I'm not predicting this bit's going to be very tricky. So um, I, what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll do this as a quiz today um, and uh, see how you go. I don't think you need to be brilliant at English. I know a number of our viewers are, won't have English as their um, sort of first language. I don't think you need to in order to solve this. There are some of them that are a bit vicious if you if you don't have English as a first language, but I think it's it's achievable even without that. So what we'll do is we'll start off and I'll go through them in, in my suggested order of difficulty. So let's start with this one, GFEDCB. Now this one is the easiest and there is not much complicated going on so you just have to think about an alphabetical sequence there and obviously what we've got going on I'm just going to reveal it G we're going backwards in the alphabet towards A so the, the missing letter we need for this one is an A so what we're going to do is we're going to put A into or we are if, it, if the machine lets me which it might not there we go we can make an A I can pick up my A, I'm going to put it, where's it got to go? Top left, so it's going to go there. Maybe I'll bold the A as well so we can see it. So, okay, so we get we get an A in the bauble. Um, now I think the next easiest is the bottom right. Oh, I've just moved everything around, sorry about that. Um, MDC LXV, what's going on here? Well, here you just have to be familiar with the concept of Roman numerals. Most puzzlers uh, will have picked this up over time. So M is the highest Roman numeral, it stands for a thousand. You've seen this in dates, I've no doubt. D for 500, C for 100, L for 50, X for 10, V for 5. So we need the Roman numeral for the number 1, which is I. And that's the answer to that one. So let's put that in. Let's make it bold again, if it lets me, which it won't. There we go. And that's got to go in the bottom right of our of our bauble. Okay, which one should we do next? They start to get a little bit more tricky now. Um, let's have a look at this one. Nam Won, N-A-M-W-O-N. Now, this one I saw instantly when I, when, when, when I saw it, um, but I can understand why some people won't because you know you might start and you might sort of do an alphanumeric equivalent of the the n you might get 14 1 13 uh, whatever w is is it 23 uh, 15 and 14 it doesn't really seem to be doing anything and all you have to do for this one I'm going to give you a hint is think about a reversal now if you reverse this sequence you can come up with a very festive item um, which of course is a snowman. So I quite like that one because it, you know, it didn't require any extraneous knowledge beyond the existence of the word snowman and what the snowman means. Um, but it's it's really quite clever. So we can put the S right in the middle of our bauble. Now they start to get a little harder now. I think what, what the the two we should look at next are either this one or this one. Both of these are quite cute. Let's try the H H H H E L I B sequence. Here we need to be thinking about chemistry. And if you're familiar with your periodic table, that will help. Um, maybe your Tom Lehrer will help as well. Uh, although Tom Lehrer is ordering, well, how does it go if there's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, a hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, etc. That's not going to help. What we need to just go is go through the periodic table from the first element, which is hydrogen, abbreviated to H, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. So HE for helium, LI for lithium, beryllium, I think is BE. So I think we're looking for an E here. Let's put the E into our 
bauble and see where that takes us so e goes here look try and make it so it's clear oh, i'm not overlapping with anything that i shouldn't be overlapping with something like that um okay ah now i've understood the somewhere frosty from somewhere frosty is that saying frosty the snowman maybe that's why maybe that the s is the place we have to start here because I'm seeing that if you look at the arrows here, we go S, E, and we might have another E, but it could also go S, E, A, S, which looks like it's the start of the word season to me. So, hmm, suspicious. Anyway, let's try this one. I like this one a lot. Um, and the key to solving this one, I think, is just to think about what an X might mean in a sequence. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're used to doing these what comes next type things, I think you'll get this quite quickly. Otherwise, it could be tricky. What we need to think about here is numbers. So if you were to write the numbers out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you were to look at the last letter of each of those numbers, the end of the letter 1 is an E. The last letter of the word 2 is an O etc. The 6 is what Gaia gives it away. S-I-X. So what we need is the end letter of the word 7, which of course is an N. That's fine. Let's put N in, N in our bauble now. Bold it up. So that's going on the right hand side just there. Okay. Now the last four are all, I think, trickier. So I think the next easiest one is this one, uh, which is I mean, what I admire about what GCHQ do in these is that they they pick at different parts of your brain. Each of these is a very different, you know, has a very different quality to it. You know, you have to know a bit about chemistry to get this one. Not a lot, just enough. You have to think a bit laterally about this one. Well, this one, you've got to be familiar. I'm going to give it away with my next word with a keyboard. So maybe if you're if you're doing this on your computer, look down and then think about this sequence. And most people are very aware of QWERTY as the top row of a keyboard, but if you started QWERTY from the other side, you would get the sequence P-O-I-U-Y-T, and then with, therefore we need an R. So let's put R into our, into our bauble, and that goes here, look. Try and get it underneath the A as, as well, well as I can. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, see, no season. Ah, uh, season still looks good if that's an O. Look, or even if that's no, it has to be this one. Has to be an O. So we suspect the answer to this one is O. Now we've got three left. We've got this one, which is vicious. This one, which is vicious, and this one, which is quite vicious. Let's start. Let's start with this one. This this is a. Uh, um, I think GCHQ's attempt to say, you know, they embrace all cultures um, because what we need to do to be able to solve this one is to be familiar uh, with an, uh, another culture's celebrations at this time of the year. And if you don't, if you don't have that thought, I don't believe this sequence is solvable at all. You can stare at these letters till you're blue in the face and you won't get anywhere. So what you have to realize, you have to think about the Chinese culture the Chinese New Year and then you have to think about which animals represent the Chinese New Year. Now if we do that properly let's come and have a look here so and we go round the sequence which began with GMRDPR so we've got goat, monkey, rooster, dog, pig, rat and so the missing one the last one in the sequence is the ox so we do get an O in the top um, in the top right of our bauble. Let's put the O in. I told you that was tricky. Um, and we can place the O here. And now you can see we've actually, we've got the word season. And where are we gonna go next? So from the N, we're gonna go down to this one. And then we're gonna go R, E, back to E again. So you can see now, you can probably get the answer. It looks like it's gonna be season season greetings or seasons greetings maybe seasons yes it's going to be seasons greetings it's going to go from n back to s down to g then r double e 
So this is going to be a T, this is an I, N, back to the G, back to the S again. So season's greetings is the message we're heading for. We know the answer now. We're going to have a G here as the next one in this one. And we're going to have a T here for the next one in this one. So your challenge is to work out why this is G and why this is T. Now let's do this one first. I think that this is, this is pretty tricky. Um, and I think the reason it's tricky is trying to work out, it almost looks like an alphabetic sequence or NOH sounds like it's something chemical. Um, but PQ, what could Q stand for? And I spent a while thinking about Queen here, but that, that won't help you. What we have to come up with is that this is about shapes. How is it about shapes? Well, a nine-sided shape is a nonagon, an eight-sided shape, an octagon, a heptagon, a hexagon, a pentagon, a quadrilateral. So what's a three-sided shape? Well, that's where we get our T from. It's a triangle. So we can put, uh, let's bold that one up and put our T here. So we just need to figure out why this is G and it's a very fitting Christmas related um, answer and if I even tell you that this is a Christmas song related answer I still think some of you will spend some time wondering what's going on here um, so I'm going to give it away now I'm going to talk about a partridge in a pear tree now if you're familiar with that um, if with that song and if you start from the number 12 which I think is what makes it really tricky you have to be familiar, it goes 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10, where is it, lords are leaping, 11 ladies dancing, 8 maids are milking, 7 swans are swimming, 6 geese are laying. So we need a G, we can get the G, put it in bold, go and put it in here and we create our final part of the season's greetings message. So thank you very much to GCHQ for setting another lovely little brain teaser. I hope you enjoyed working through it. Let us know in the comments and we'll be back later with a normal edition, of course, of Cracking the Cryptic.